Hi there, it's Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, Woman on TV. TV iTube 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, Worldwide TV Network, iHeart Radio, Comcast, Amazon Music, Pandora, Spotify, and Apple TV. So this is a special show. I'm sure he's not usually around on a Saturday doing a Zoom interview. I could be wrong, but it's one of those things. Okay, <laughs> who are you and where'd you come from? I'm George Bohone Jr. Um, I, I'm the Here's guitar the player, writer, producer, um, crazy man that's been touring with the P, Black Eyed Peas for, since 1998. I've been at every show, played on every record. Uh, and I have my own project called Cairo and I Fight, which is why we came together because uh, we're playing on Andrew Kroll's um, Let Me Help concert on the 24th uh, for hashtag I am no joke. And Grammy winner. You got that one. <laughs> uh, s- s- nominated seven times. Yeah, exactly. Hey, that's a good feat. And I just had Andrew in the studio last week and he just popped in. I didn't know him. He didn't know me but he left inspired. So obviously that was a good thing. Welcome to Movie Reviews and More. You'll see two of the girls popping on any moment. Uh, They were both running late from the studio, but uh, it's an honor to do that. No problem. Oh, Johnny, um, musicians need help. I feel bad a lot of people aren't there touring. So this is one of the ways to give back the stuff. Talk about your new band. Talk about why you decided to do this because it is an important thing. And I'm glad that the word is getting out there around the world. Well, you know, I, this is a, a project that I've been a part of for going on three years now. I met Andrew a couple of years ago, and we, my band, Cairo and I Fight, backed him up in the very first concert uh, in Spain. The first concert we did for this was in Spain, and uh, that was a wonderful experience. And I helped him on some of the recordings. Uh, I, I worked with Andrew um, probably like 10 of the songs that he will eventually release and um so we're we're good friends and you know even with andrew i'm i'm very lucky and very blessed that um you know ironically i moved out of california literally when the pandemic started and i moved to vegas and i had to do it all myself and I got so lucky that I found a house in Vegas that's completely isolated. It's a completely green house. I'm completely off the grid. I have no neighbors. I have no contact of, with people. And so the pandemic for me has not been any kind of threat because I'm not around anyone. And so I offered Andrew, hey, I'm going to send you a plane ticket. Come over here and decompress for you know a weekend because that's what you can do here. And he left here so inspired that literally the first thing he did was put together this concert, you know, and that's how I've been giving to my friends and families, like, just come out here. You know, if you're going through, you know, cause everyone is affected in such an immense way with this, especially musicians that they basically make all their money from touring nowadays. Cause streaming doesn't really give you enough money to be able to survive. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. Hi, it's Terry Marie. Sorry, I'm a little bit late in joining. No, no problem. I apologize. I'm George. Nice uh, to meet you, George. So, you know, for me, when I, when the whole pandemic started, I was already in isolation because I was writing a record. And normally, when I write records with Nick for my band, it what interrupts the process is always me having to go on tour. So yeah. when my other band, the Black Eyed Peas calls and, hey, we're going to, you know, do Rock and Rio in, in wherever in, in, you know, we've done it every city that it's ever do- been presented. But you know, recently we did it in Rio and that interrupts the writing process for about two weeks to sometimes months. And so the blessing for me was that it never got interrupted because everything stopped. So it, it's an honor for me to be able to help the people that don't have that blessing and and be able to be a part of this concert. And the song that we're performing is called The Opiate of the Living. And that song is about mental health and the, the things that Nick Gaffney had to deal with for himself and for his, oh, the original guitar player in Cow and I Fight, the band was formed in New Zealand. The original guitar player was Aaron uh, Takano. 
and he dealt with a lot of mental health issues. So Nick left New Zealand, moved to Los Angeles and met me because of the issues he was having with Aaron based on mental health issues. But it's, a, it's an issue that's very close and dear to our hearts. And, and we're glad that, you know, you know, I, I've seen all the footage that Andrew did, which was amazing for that movie. He has so much amazing footage and the way he did it was just awe-inspiring. I mean, he, he literally would just walk in somewhere and start talking to these legends and, and they would agree to it because it was something that they were close to bullying and, and mental health issues. And so, you know, it's a great cause and I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. You know, he was telling me about this last Wednesday in the studio. I was like, wow. And I didn't know who he was and he didn't know who I was. And he came in and it was a, it was a, it was a great show. Um, uh, our other co-host, Victoria, who she was in there with DJ Badash. And I was impressed. And then we we became friends, but he was so happy that he came on a show. He goes, Ryan, I'm, you know, I got this thing that I'm doing. I've got 50 legends in there and they're all talking about, you know, anti-bullying, having anxiety, depression and stuff like that. And I'm like, bring them on. Let's talk about it. Because I know a lot of people in my friends that suffer for that. One girl I still can't reach going back to Nam mid-January. I still haven't reached her. I know she's heavily going to it. I see her pop up here or here online, but you can't hide it. You can see they're, they're doing their best to put on a face, but you just know what's going on. It's kind of sad. It is. Well, Brian, this is what I mentioned to you yesterday. Um, so many people are having like mental health, health issues now because of this pandemic thing with, with for different reasons that didn't even know that they were dealing with them. I mean, you know, like I, I have post-traumatic stress disorder and have anxiety issues. And I'm not embarrassed to say it because I think a lot of us have it. And, you know, it comes out, you know, here and there with places. So this is really an important subject, you know, to be talking about. Absolutely. Right? Especially right now. <clears throat> you know, I feel I'm a very, I, I said this in an interview I did yesterday and I'm a very lucky person because that piece of wood with six strings mm -hmm. has always been my counselor. How mm -hmm. I release any kind of tension and energy that I have inside. I turn on an amp, I turn it up really loud and I play. And it sometimes turns into something that is very therapeutic for me. Not everyone has that release, even yeah. including my wife. She, just, she can't pick up a guitar and, and let whatever's inside her out. And so I'm always a very um, relaxed, even keel guy because of that. And I don't suffer from any of that. And, and, and I have a lot of, uh, uh, I feel for people that do that because it's a blessing that I don't have that because of my connection with that instrument. You know, it's just a release for me. It really is. I like what you're saying about that because I think everybody needs to be able to find something to get that release out. I do that with, I'm a, I'm a fitness competitor and I'm really into physical, you know, into working out and weight training. And that's how, how you use it with a guitar. I use it with weights. Mm -hmm. um, some people can use it with singing. Some people can use it with dance. Some people need yoga. They just need to find an outlet. So they're releasing that negative energy and turning it to positive. Absolutely. And talking about it is, is the start, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just even being able to be inspired by something that someone says about it could lead to finding your release. Mm -hmm. Well, George, um, I saw this happen. I saw it coming two years ago. And I tell people this, I just didn't know what the name was. That's the reason why I moved to Vegas. That's why I was sequestered from September, actually August 23rd of last year, right up until June 1st, I was in the house by myself. And then Terry is one of our co-hosts where we are knocking out all these shows. So I wasn't affected by it. And this my this is my best year ever for movie reviews and more. So what I tell people, our job is to help tell those stories. Our job is to help serve and inspire those people. And that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Very fortunate about doing that. And, and there, there is nothing to hide anymore. There's no one, there's no shame, there's no embarrassment. The, the, the more you get it out and the more you talk to people, the better. I found that even when I was doing stuff on the adult side with a lot of the girls, the reason why they became adult performers is they didn't have, they had bad images, the, they came from bad backgrounds, you know, they tried to bury everything that was there, but sooner or later something snaps and it comes back up and it's hard to bury it down. I agree. 
I agree. You live in Vegas as well? Absolutely. No, I'm in Redondo Beach, California. And I kind of I kind of went on a little bit of a depression thing on yesterday, but I, I'm out of it now because, you know, Governor Newsom decided just to, to put us all in a curfew, which I, you know, I have asthma, so I'm like a at risk person. So I do everything I can to be careful, but I also have to kind of live my life. And again, what I was saying before, I'm a physical active person. So when they, you know, shut gyms down and stuff, that messes with my head because then that takes my release from me so you know um I kind of went into like a, a depression thing last night and overslept this morning but you know I'm fine now because I mean I find myself slipping but then I pull myself back up and I think you know that's something that sometimes you have to I called Brian last night he kind of talked me out of it if that makes sense so sometimes you need somebody awesome. to talk you out of yeah, you know absolutely. going in that that dark place <laughs> but uh yeah so california we get a we have a four week are you in california also or where are you i i moved to vegas oh you're um, in vegas. oh so you're lucky we have a four week curfew so all the businesses here are upset because they have to close down at 10 o'clock which i don't understand what it's going to really do by closing down things um early I, I i don't know what the science is about it but that's what we're dealing with here you know so i don't want to be Mm -hmm. my, my studio is in Los Angeles, so and I'm born and raised. Uh, so this is the first time that I'm not, I don't live in, in Los Angeles in my life. Um, and, you know, it's every time I go there for work reasons, you know, because, you know, pretty much everything work related for me is based out of Los Angeles, but I don't have to live there anymore. And one of the reasons my wife and I left is because, um, you know, for obvious reasons, um, financially, Los Angeles and Cal all of California has become so expensive. Yep. yep. And we weren't, the quality of life we were having there was just, it, there was no quality of life. Mm -hmm. I was basically working to live. Mm -hmm. And and I just didn't like that. And so we decided, made the move to Vegas. And now we can host people and we can, we have the freedom to be able to help other people you know I was I you know I did that with Andrew when I saw that he was getting frustrated because everyone goes through it it you know when you're told you can't do this <laughs> and it's something mm -hmm. you love to do it becomes you know some some people don't know how to handle it and some people mm -hmm. take it different in different ways and so a lot of my family a lot of my friends they've come out here just to decompress and you know, it's it's a scary thing about Vegas. I don't know if you agree with me, Brian. I don't live anywhere near the Strip. But I don't either. You, when <laughs> friends come here and they're like, "Hey, we want to go to <laughs> we want to go to the Strip." I'm like, "Okay, let me take you somewhere." And you decide if you want to get out of the car. I go to downtown <laughs> Fremont Street, and what they're doing in downtown Fremont Street is crazy to me. They have metal detectors in the beginning of the of Fremont Street experience and at the end of it. So you go through this metal detector and there's like three to 5,000 people standing next to each other, just stuck in that middle section. I'm like, do you want to go to in there? And they're like, no, hell no. And it's just what I, what I'm seeing in Vegas is the people that are frustrated at home and they're like, man, I've been cooped up in this house for eight months. Fuck it. Let's go to Vegas. And they go crazy mm -hmm. and they come here and they just lose their minds. So well, George, yeah, I try to stay away from, from the strip as much as I can. George, that's the reason why I took myself out of Los Angeles because one, financial reasons, because I'm like, if I'm going to do this correctly, I've got to change everything around now. That's why I started doing it two years ago. It's not because I wanted to leave my home in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's the smart thing to do, what you were talking about. And I'm over near the lakes, so it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Three places. I go to the park. I put in my drum and bugle chord music because that's what gets me going. I can't go to the movies, which used to be my outlet. I can, but one, there's nothing playing. Two, I don't trust the ventilation because I know. So, so a lot of my, I know, I, I understand what Terry feels like. A lot of my outlets have been taken care of. So I put everything into our shows. With that, George, that's why we got 6.4 million views a day. That's why Terry's got over 3 million views and counting a day. That's why we're doing wow. so. It's because we did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's not like you wanted to move from Los Angeles. It was the right thing to do, one, for financially, but also to get a uh, to get your head straight and just be out in everything. That's what it was. So I invited you Andrew know, to do the same thing. 
for for me, I knew what I wanted to do. You know, I say I say this with up, utmost respect. I call the Black Eyed Peas my flipping burgers job <laughs> because that's not my baby, even though I'm very close to it because I've been in that band since 98. I played on every song and and you know wrote a lot of the songs with will and the and the guys and and fergie but it's not something that is close my heart band is the one i'm doing just like the black eyed peas is will's baby you know that he was the, the he's the main creative force behind that band and and so if i wanted to financially be able to continue to do music the way i wanted to do it i had to leave los angeles because you lower your overhead so you can actually be creative. And, and nowadays, realistically, if you want to be an artist, you have to afford to be able to be an artist. There's no more, you know, I'm going to, you know, work my butt off to get a record deal. That stuff doesn't exist, really. Mm -hmm. It only mm -hmm. exists for the people that have unbelievably unattainable numbers. <laughs> it's, 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 <clears throat> a, it's, it's a yin and yang situation because... It's the first time in the history of me, of any kind of art art that you can do it yourself, yeah. but it's so difficult if you do not have any kind of finances to be able to bring in those numbers. You know, I'm seeing. Uh, I just realized that I was hurting my family, and it's just me and my wife. But I was investing money that we didn't have into projects, and it's like, well, I can't keep doing this. I can't right. keep, you know, putting us in the hole by living in Los Angeles. And so we decided we were gonna move in. The three options for us is she's from Denver and Denver would have been a lot harder because it's a two hour flight. And yeah. I literally just drove back yesterday to Vegas uh -huh. because I was shooting five concerts with the P's at, at PRG Studios uh, for, for you know many different outlets that are gonna stream the, the concerts. So I'm constantly going back and forth I didn't want to do two hours every time that I had to go back to LA for work. And my studio's still there. Eventually I'll build my studio here. But, um, you know, I, in this month, in this month and last month, I spent more time in LA than here. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny about that, George, is I did the same thing because Terry's been with me for five years and we have what, 12 other couples, they're all women. And then, so what we've been doing is we're, we are very close. There's been one or two that are really going through it. You know, they're kind of in and out, but they're there. But when I go in, I take the mega bus in and I have my Segway and I ride around all of Los Angeles oh, wow. Segway <laughs> because it's cool for one, but it's, but it's a strange eerie feeling. But you kind of feel it when you go in, it's not the same what it was two years ago. It's very odd. And I just no. get out of there. It feels it's it feels the, it feels a little almost apocalyptic to me when I'm there. Me too. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I feel that way and I live here and I've talked to Brian about this because I've been literally thinking about moving out of California after this pandemic. I don't feel like I belong here anymore. I don't know what it is, but spiritually, like, you know, you just know, like, and I mean, one is the financial thing because I mean I could have a better quality of life here. I don't know, there's just a lot of negative energy in LA and I, I never, and I'm born and raised here. I've been in Southern California my whole life. I grew up in Sherman Oaks, California. I've lived in Newport beach. I've lived in Northern California. Now I'm in Redondo. And I just, I've never felt this energy here. And I don't know if it's the pandemic because of so many people have like lost, you know, everything with, you know, the way that they've handled shutting businesses down here or, or what it is, but it just seems toxic. I don't, I, don't I really don't think, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I don't think you can blame it on the pandemic. California had just mm -hmm. become so impossible to, and I'm going to just mm -hmm. speak for myself. Yep. I'm trying to break a band that's not your normal, everyday, easy to comprehend band. And so what I found, I'm in LA. I play in one of the most popular bands for the last 10, 20 years. And I still can't get any love in my home city at, you know, mm -hmm. I would do shows and the way my, my band's only two people. So we have an enormous amount of gear to be able to pull off what we pull off. You know, we don't sound like two people. We're doing a lot of looping and a lot of this. So we bring a lot of gear with us and they sometimes won't even let us in the door. 
Wow. And wow. that never happens anywhere else mm. but Los That's Angeles. That's crazy. Anywhere else. Like, I, we would tour. I would pay for my own tours. Hello. Uh, this is what's Victoria. your name? Okay. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, George. So to continue what I was saying, I would tour out of state just to be able to get the respect of a listening audience. And I thought that was just crazy. And so I, while I'm here in Vegas, I've, I've met so many people, even during the pandemic, that they believe we can start a complete scene here. That's not an option in Los Angeles. No Absolutely. one will even give you that time of day. Nobody, no one will even, not even my close friends would show up. We, I, I begged a person to give me a residency in downtown Los Angeles at a place called Our Bar. We loved playing. There's little tiny little rock and roll bar. Some people came every month, but I can't tell you how many people I invited that never showed up. And that's, that's Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. You know what? You are so freaking right about that <laughs> you know it's like you instead of telling people there's a pandemic you should have just told them there was a show and everyone would have stayed at home yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. and you know over <laughs> here it's just a it's it, <laughs> i was ready for more of a small town mentality which is what i feel that it is in vegas and i can't tell you how many times you know, you drive around Vegas and everything is Vegas strong and it's so they ride for their city. Mm -hmm. I don't see that in Los Angeles. You can go to a Laker game and everyone's on their phone. It's like, That's what true. is this? It's like, you're, what are you doing here? I would. They don't know. Of, yeah, they don't know. They don't I know where make, they are. I make but fun of Will all the time because I would go to games and he'd be front court right on, you know, next to Jack Nicholson on the court and he's on his phone and I would just send him scathing text messages. <laughs> it's like, Give that seat to me. What are you doing? You I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the Los Angeles that's mentality. So it really is. You know, I, and I learned it when, I, when I met my wife <clears throat> and she was from Denver. And so I would go visit her in Denver and she'd take me to a Broncos game. I'm just like, totally this doesn't different. exist in Los Angeles. I go to a Nuggets game and it's like, these guys haven't won a championship in how long? And everyone here is just yeah. diehard and they love yeah. the team and they ride for the team. It's just different. It really is. No but, one's, I yeah. think Los Angeles has just too much. Well, you know what you were, you <laughs> like, what you were saying about okay. the energy is about that, that energy has been here before the pandemic. I just kind of opened, it just opened my eyes to see what I hadn't seen before. And I think that the pandemic has, awakened a lot of people to kind of see what's kind of going on like in California Absolutely. or in other areas. Absolutely. That's that's where I was born with that. Yeah. Well, you uh, you know. Also also like the Midwest, like I grew up in Indianapolis, right? So it's like the Colts are like all we have. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? There's not all things happening yeah like there is in LA so like you have signs on gas stations like we're closed it's Sunday what are you talking about no one's going to be there anyway because they're all home watching the game yeah. right so it's just a totally different thing but that's very <laughs> small towny but I also love that like they, I do too just the amount of yeah mm -hmm. what? just so somebody who loves something so much that they actually have closed their stores down because as a community, as a whole, we're all there watching. I can't tell you how amazing it was. You know, I've, I've been lucky enough and blessed to have seen the, you know, travel the world many times over for 22 years. And to see that in a small, in a small town in, a, in another country where the, the peas were playing in a soccer stadium and you were watching the whole town come. Every oh store God. was closed. Every restaurant was closed. And you'd see the signs turn, going to the Peace concert, going to the, it was mm -hmm. just, I'm like, you know, I want to live like that. <laughs> I, I, and I, we, my wife and I started talking about it a long time ago. The first time that we were able to actually put it all together was, ironically, we moved the day they shut down California. No way. So <laughs> wow. I had wow. no help. I literally had to move my whole house by myself. I couldn't call friends because no one was uh -huh. going to come and help you. 
and no company <laughs> was no allowed. company wouldn't move you either. No, nobody so ever will. I did it all by myself and it was extremely therapeutic because <laughs> when it was over, I was like, yes. <laughs> but, you know, funny. it was so surreal to me. I put my, my, my house in Burbank on the market on the Thursday before the city was shut down. So yes. that, that Thursday, we had the open house on that weekend. Over 250 people came to see that house. The realtor's like, oh, what? we're going to sell. We're going to sell this house by next Thursday. Yo, Burbank is where I have a place in Burbank too. It's like, if you'll, you'll, it's a good investment because it, it's such a good area and it was you know, supply and demand. It was but. for me. I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't afford to be there anymore. And I, I'll just give you a perfect example. My property taxes in Burbank were $13,000. Mm -hmm. Here in Vegas, they're two. There's a okay, big difference. No, well, no brainer. <laughs> there's that. So there's that. You know, but we, if you can do what you're doing and do it in Vegas, that's the obvious oh yeah. choice. Uh, well, you know, we're still like need to be at the studio sometimes, and you know, so it's worth it for us no, to. No, I, I understand. Spend I mean, a, look, a little all, extra. Bet. All my work is still in Los Angeles. I I've, I've been back six times in the last two weeks, <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know, I'm constantly <laughs> I'm constantly <laughs> driving. That's, that's you like travel. Life. That would, that's that's what I'm kind of gearing for 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 me is to move to another state, but then still come because I have my mom yeah. here and stuff. But I'm like, out of California, but I still would be kind of I'd be maybe by coastal, I don't know, or by state. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the by way to state do it. Um, yeah, I, my wife and I, I, I had real desires of what I wanted, where I wanted to live, and I knew that when we started looking for the house. And we just, it was just luck. We got so lucky and blessed. We moved into the first house we saw and it was perfect. Stop. It's like a wedding dress. Yeah. The first you one we know. saw, she fell in <laughs> love with. And, you know, it's a completely off the grid house. I'm completely green. I have a septic tank, solar. Really? Uh, well. Uh, of course, that's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what I'm doing in Northern California. Well water. On yeah. our private ranch. It's called the Dream for Artists Ranch, where it's That's pretty awesome. sustainable. And we have our own water uh, water power plant on it. You're going to be invited. You do? Everything that we can to help your band, because these two are the, the, the original co-hosts that came to me to see <laughs> two years ago. So uh, yep. Victoria's got 1.7 million views and counting. Terry's got over 3 million. That's how we started. We had to awesome. go outside of Los Angeles to shoot our shows to get the numbers, which is what you're talking about. Yeah, and and I believe, look, I'm I'm doing a very very difficult thing, especially during these times. But it's I'm not even speaking about the pandemic. It's just the the te the basically the status of music. The industry's gone, uh -huh. and no one can help you anymore. You have to do it all by yourself. And <laughs> yep. I, I decided yeah. I want to start a rock band, which is the hardest genre right now <laughs> to promote and get out there. And right now it's basically impossible because rock survives on touring. Right. You know, basically That's so everything. That's interesting. Is, it survives on touring. And, you know, I'm very lucky that I get residuals from the music that I've written with the P's. But, you Does, know. That's awesome. Yeah. But the future is all about yeah. content. And now, and, you know, the blessing for me, what happened with the pandemic that helped me was essentially I was isolating myself while I was, when I decided, okay, I'm gonna start the next Cairo and I fight record. So my schedule was very simple. Wake up, go to the studio, come back, have lunch with my wife, go to the studio, come back, have dinner with my wife, go to the studio, I'll see you tonight when we're in bed. Then when the only thing that was interrupting that schedule is me having to go on tour. When the pandemic happened, nothing interrupted it. So we decided, let's really dive hard into this. And we, we wrote for over a year. We started in December of last year. We wrote 20 songs. I just tracked all of them at Dave Grohl's studio, 606, which was a dream come true uh -huh. for me. It's the Sound hey. City. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the documentary, Sound City. Oh, I love yeah, that. I did. That's a great documentary. It's a great, it's a great documentary. Well, we just recorded on that board with that Purple. equipment, wow. with all of it, 
all of that stuff is there. And it was just such an um, emotional, amazingly inspirational experience. And, you know, I recorded all 20 songs there. And basically what we're going to do is, you know, I'm, I'm gearing up for an extremely optimistically, maybe impossible project. So I want to do four records. The first two are the 20 I just recorded. And we'll release those probably starting the beginning of next year. As um, singles? Uh, one, well, it all depends on if I'm in charge of, if I have to do it all by myself, there's a lot yeah. of interest from, there's a lot of interest from labels, but you know, we'll see if they present something that's even worth me giving up any kind of ownership. But right. if I do it all by myself, I'm basically going to release a song a month for six months and then release the record because you'd have to release the record in time for, uh, for all the award situations. Not so much in Los Angeles because, you know, having a Grammy nomination for this is probably going to be virtually impossible unless with the help of lovely people like you, the word spreads <laughs> and, and, you know, we can get the numbers that you need to be considered for that. But more importantly, the band originally is from New Zealand. In New Zealand, anytime we release an album, we get nominated. We, we have mm -hmm. been nominated for, you know, rock record of the year. So my goal is to win this year or awesome. you know, create enough music and enough content to be able to continue to keep people engaged. And I noticed when we released the last record, the engagement level was huge when we released the first single, the second single, then we released the album and then we ran out of money and it went, phew, it disappeared. And so I, I regrouped with Nick and said, if when, next time we do this, we have to have enough material to continue to engage people year round. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm doing, I did the 20 songs, which will equate to two years worth of, of music. And then I'm going to reimagine the eight top songs, what we, what we believe are the eight top songs. And each one of those songs are going to be 14 minute versions. And then on that version, I'm bringing in all these friends that I've met over the years of touring. And they're going to be featured on every, you know, each song. That's so smart. That's oh, cool. my God. That's then the That's fourth really smart. version, the fourth version yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these friends of mine, like including Will, including, you know, all the producers I've worked with, and they're going to give them all this music and say, pretend like I'm a CD and sample me and do a remix. And then I'll get people that I know in the hip hop world, R&B world that I've worked with and written with, and they'll be on that version. And that'll be the fourth version. So it's quite the endeavor, but I believe I can make it happen. And there's so much time now that I've been using it to, for my advantage. That's great. Good it's like you. once it's like unearned income, like one song, 11 different ways, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's basically, you know, it's what the DJs do. It's, you know, I've yeah. learned from that. I mean, as you I should tour, always have a remix of your singles that, yeah. you know, the, the uh, like acoustic version, the regular version, the dance remix version. It's like every you get to re-release it every quarter or how, where, however you want to do it. We want we want to exactly do that. We want to keep our fans and new fans engaged constantly. And we're gonna do it. And let's you're see doing what happens. it. It's <laughs> fail proof. I have faith in you. Thank you, well, George. You have a new outlet that we would be more than happy to help you. And yes. thank you. I will. I will Why definitely. Work? Is it because we have different co-hosts, all women too, plus the music platforms, and that's why I wanted Victoria on because she is our main singer. You know, her DJ <laughs> uh, Jessica Heim out of Tennessee, <laughs> then Tosh out of Miami, Florida. So that's what we've been Victoria, doing. Victoria, Victoria was rushing. Yeah, Victoria was rushing here from the studio. <laughs> that's why I had to jump on after. <laughs> I've never seen a countdown clock. We're we're on a, a eight minute fifty one second countdown right now. <laughs> you know why? Oh my God, where I'll are tell, you seeing that? I'll tell you why. Is because I only need so many minutes on my Zoom. And then in the studios, the girls to tell you, we have an hour show. And then what, what, what it is, and I could take exactly what you just talked about, 
That's mm -hmm. the platform on how to do everything. I need an hour or a half an hour, cut whatever and just go for it and it works. And that's why our numbers are so huge. Awesome. Wait, where do you see countdown numbers? I don't see it top. online either. I can see it. George it's on the can top see left. it. Not everybody can see it. <laughs> I can't oh. see it. I like looking at the button. I don't see it. We almost <laughs> got eight minutes left. George, <laughs> oh, no. why it's important, um, uh, you know, for hope for Andrew Cole music, obviously Soho Johnny, why that's important. Because like I said, we'd love to have you on. Anytime you want to come on, we'll feature your music. We'll be the first to feature your music. Okay, I'll, I'll take you up on that. As soon as yeah. I have my first single ready to go, I'll send it to you. Awesome. Yeah, it's so going to be fun. Yeah, George, really give your social media this, links so. on everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really easy. You just go to chironifight.com and that's C A I C A I R O and K N A I F E fight.com. And all the, the links are on the bottom of every page. Cool. Cairo knife fight. Yes. And Victoria, um, I know you're going to right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's a unique, you know, we just touched on it a little bit. Why I wanted to be a part of this band is um, I always had this theory that the reason rock music and basically all bands are not succeeding is because they need so much to succeed. But then you Absolutely. see a DJ that's traveling the world with a backpack and a USB stick. And I said, how do I create a band that's exactly like that? And so it's two of us and we do everything. And so the drummer sings, plays drums and plays bass with his left hand. I play guitar and bass in the band. And we do, we basically create um, landscape you know, loops underneath that we play over. And like a TV track, right? Uh, yeah, but we're not, we don't, we don't do any kind of uh, tracks. So everything's live. So it's either you're coming to see a complete train wreck or you're coming to see magic happen right in front oh of you. Oh my God. I have so much anxiety. Right now. <laughs> I'm like, y'all are doing four instruments with two people like an octopus over here yes. and like whatever happens is gonna happen. <laughs> like, that's so I'll amazing. give you, a, I'll give you a perfect example. The, the footage that Andrew, I gave to Andrew for the concert on the 24th, the song yeah. is called The Opiate of the Living. And it's a song that deals with what Nick had to deal with, with mental health, with mm -hmm. his partner in New Zealand. But that song is the only song of that performance that magically everything fell into place and we had one song where it all worked. The rest of the concert was a disaster. That's Things live were, though. It, it, and it's, you could see, when you see the performance, the very beginning of the performance, I start my loop and Nick is sitting there like this and he's just taking yeah. a breath because the five songs up to that point, nothing worked. Oh. <laughs> And you could see his what's face. That's so much fun about, about watching live performances because like this is going to be what it is. Like mm -hmm. you, there's no like, wait, loop that one more time. You guys didn't see that, you know, like yeah, I love it's, it. It's, it's so organic. You'll see how organic and you'll see Nick's op octopus talents <laughs> <laughs> in that performance. And and it's good that I get to talk about it because that's the, the biggest um, hurdle with this band is that people don't understand what's going on. Right. They're, they see two people on stage and they're like, wait, why does that sound so big? And what's going on here? And I can't tell you how many times my wife will be in the audience and people will come up to her and be like, are there tracks? What's going on? Where's all that music coming from? And they're like, and she'll have to go over to my my board and Nick's board and be like, see that there? That's a looper. They're creating that on the spot. Wait, that's impossible. How is that's how's that even so possible? Freaking cool. And it's, it's just, you know, I met a guy that has this amazing ability to be able to play music and loop it and play to himself perfectly. And I have over couple hundred thousand hours of being on the road and all I hear 
in my ears playing with the peas is a click track going clack 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 and because we're playing the tracks yeah. with the peas so that unknowingly trained me for this band <laughs> i've trained oh my God. for 20 years to be able to sync to recorded music if you ever even could have planned that like if you were writing could. out your life plan you would never have even thought to have these exact specific life experiences that would bring you to this point where you need to know exactly what you know the way that you know it to do what it you want to do it so goes cool. even it goes even deeper than that because how i even met nick is on it's it's fate like oh, I, part two <laughs> i i worked well on, yeah we're um, gonna have to have a part two, a part two. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that Okay. And so let me, so George, let me tell you this real quick. So as a disc jockey in the late seventies, I, everything that I was doing then still applies today is what you were talking about. Our shows, we start our shows, whatever happens, happens. You just go with it. And they've been our best shows because I never know what I'm Yeah. And you know, these two have been here. So again, it's only been two years that we did this, but We've been around longer than that, but it was like finding the right team. You yeah. have the right person. And it almost reminds me of crap. You know, yeah. You know what that's called? Honesty. And that's basically what people are hungry for nowadays. Huh? And think about it. What has everyone been doing yep. since this pandemic started? Consuming. They've been consuming TV, nonstop consumption of TV <laughs> and music. So what they're going to be hungry for? Something real and something honest. Because they've Woo! already been force fed through the, just having out of necessity. You, what are you going to do? You're going to sit down and, and, and consume art. Well, now you've consumed it all. So you are looking for something unique and different and honest. And I think that's going to open the door for a lot of people that are like what you just said. You just let things roll and let things happen. And whatever happens, happens. That's how we do our it's shows. Bad. There's no cutting. It is. This is. That's how it is. <laughs> And Victoria, and you're absolutely Victoria was in the studio when she met Andrew. Oh, awesome. Oh. <laughs> Wait, awesome. which one? Uh, Andrew Cole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, he's he's so awesome. Love that guy. What a, that yeah, was such a is. great show. And this is the second I am no joke concert I'm I've done with him because I was Nick and I, my band backed him up in uh. Spain for the first concert. Oh really? All right, we got about uh, we got about ten seconds. So uh, George, give your um, social media links one more time, and then let's plan a part two if we can. All right? Yes. Absolutely. I'm down. I'm open whenever you guys need me. Um, it's uh, www.caronifight.com. You can find everything there. You have time to do it afterwards after this one? Huh? You have time to do it after this? Absolutely. You, you, Terry, Victoria, you got time? Yep. Uh, I do. I might not. But, well, at, let me see if I can work some things out. out. <laughs> right. I want to be here. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours. And then, George, thank you for coming on, Victoria, Terry. And this is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next time.